Hey, it's Bjorgankevich here. And in this video, I would like to present how you can actually create an ASP.NET Core application, use the Docker to build the image of the application, and then publish it to the real world using the Ubuntu server, probably somewhere in the cloud, and then expose your app using the Nginx, which is one of the most popular HTTP servers. So let's start from the very beginning. At first, we'll create a new ASP.NET Core app using the .NET new command. So .NET new MVC or .NET new web API, it doesn't really matter. And let's run the .NET restore. Once we have our packages restored correctly, we can do .NET run. And only let's check if our app is working correctly on the localhost. So I'll open the Chrome browser and go to localhost 5000. And let's see. Okay, so our sample app is up and running. That's great. Now let's try to actually um, build a Docker image using our ASP.NET Core application. So let's kill it. And I'll open the Visual Studio Code, open the directory where our app is. As you can see, it's basic uh, application built with the ASP.NET Core template. And here, let's create a new file and just call the Docker file. And within the Docker file, we'll just add a few commands in order to be able to build our Docker image. So we can do things like from Microsoft slash .NET latest. This is the image that we want to use. And then we'll copy our directory. So copy the current directory into app, set the work directory to the app folder. Now we want to restore the packages. So we'll just run a .NET restore command. Then we want to run a .NET build command. And before we actually run the application, let's expose the default port of 5000 and set the two environment variables into ASP.NET core URLs to be HTTP this wildcard. And finally, the ASP.NET core environment to be of type, it can be Docker testing production, doesn't matter. Basically by using this environment variable, you can control on what type of, of environment you are in. And finally, we can set the entry point of our Docker image to .NET run command. So let's save our Docker file and let's try to build the image, okay? So we have the web app and let's just run the Docker build command and we'll tag it with web app and demo and set the directory to the current directory. The Docker build has been just, uh, has just started. Let's wait a second. It will need to restore the NuGet packages. And after a while, we'll see that our Docker image is ready. So we can try to run the Docker image on the localhost. So I'll just say Docker run, expose the default port of 5000. And then let's uh, say it's web app demo. And let's see if it runs. Okay, so our app is working. Let's refresh the website. And we can see that our Docker image has been built um, properly. Okay, um, here you can see some errors, mostly due to the fact that uh, some static files using the Bower and the webpack were not built correctly, but it doesn't matter right now. What we want to do is actually to pack this application, the whole application, and publish it somewhere in the cloud using the Ubuntu server and the uh, engines. All right, so let's kill our Docker app on the localhost. I will just uh, kill it directory. So Docker stop 56, uh, 56 C. All right, uh, once we have our app, ready and uh, packed within the Docker container, what we can do is to actually publish it to the real world. So I have my droplet and droplet is just a virtual machine using the digital ocean cloud. So I will just log into my virtual machine here. And as you can see, here I have my virtual machine. So I'll just copy the IP address and I'll use the SSH to actually log into my Ubuntu server. So SSH root at this IP address. 
And now I want to clear a virtual machine. I have nothing there. So the first thing I want to do is actually to install the Docker. So I can type Docker install Ubuntu. And there will be this second link, how to install Docker on Ubuntu. So I can go to this website and just follow the guide. And it's very simple. I will just copy these commands and paste them, paste them into my terminal one by one. So the first command, once it's finished, I will uh, copy the second command. Now the third command, it's quite long as you can see. Uh, okay, next command. And finally, the last two commands, like this. And now we can install the Docker on our Ubuntu server. It will take a moment, but it's real quick, real fast. Now we have our Docker installed. So let's see if I type Docker, I can see that I have my Docker commands here. I'll make it a full screen. So the next thing we want to do is to actually publish our application here. We want to use this uh, sample web app. Instead, I will just use my another app that I have in my Docker hub, which is a registry for the Docker images. Um, I will open my hub Docker account. As you can see, I have my .NET Core Tour application here, and it's basically uh, attached to this GitHub repository. So if I open this repository, you can see that this is very, very simple ASP.NET Core app. And I made this uh, available in the Docker Hub simply by clicking here, choosing Create Automated Build, and then um, picking this Create Auto Build from a GitHub and selecting the proper repository here. So I'll just, for example, click here, click Create, and I'll have my Docker Hub uh, image within the Docker Hub registry available to be pulled and run. Now let's get back to the dashboard and select my app. As you can see, I have uh, two branches here, one for the master, one for the develop, but it doesn't matter right now. What matters is that I can go and take this command, docker pull, I will copy it and I will paste it here on my Ubuntu server. And for the first time, it will just fetch this whole image. It will take a while, mostly due to the fact that it needs to fetch the .NET image for the first time. But once you have .NET or Redis or RabbitMQ image, it will not uh, fetch it again and again whenever the new image will be built. But still, it's, it's quite fast operation. It only takes maybe half a minute or a minute tops. It's extracting, so it should be ready quite soon. I will just copy this image name here. And actually, let's try to run our Docker image here. So I will say Docker run and again expose the port of 5000 here and type my image name. So the Docker is already running here, as you can see. So what should we be able to do right now is to just copy this IP address and go to the port 5000. And I will provide the slash entries, which is one of the endpoints within my sample web API application. And as you can see, our app is working correctly. So that's great. That's the first step. We have our application already available to the outside world. However, we are using the Kestrel. And the Kestrel, well, it's a great HTTP server. It's very fast server based on the LibUV, which was written in a C++, the library itself. It's an asynchronous library for the I.O. processing. However, it's not really suited for the production uh, usage. Why? Well, let's say you want to include SSL certificates, you want to do load balancing stuff, and many other interesting things. This is not achievable with Kestrel, which means that you need to use things like Apache or IIS or Nginx, which we will use here in our scenario. Right, so I can just uh, open the new terminal and login again to my server. As you can see, I didn't run this uh, Docker image in the background, so I'll have to kill it or stop it directly. So I can just do docker stop lfc. 
Okay, and here it's tapped, so I can run my image again, but this time in the background using the dash D argument. Okay, so it's working. Now, the next thing we want to do is to install the engine. So let's go and type engines org. And basically, engines is a great HTTP server, one of the most popular in the world, I would say. So let's install the engines in our Ubuntu server. And in order to do this, let's type in the command apt get install engines. Yes. And again, very, very fast operation. So the engines is up and running, which means that we should be able to actually access our virtual machine simply by going to this IP address and using the default port of 80. Yeah, so it works. Now, what we want to achieve is to actually redirect all of the movement from our public port to this application, right? So we want to redirect the incoming traffic on the port of 80 to the application working locally on a port of 5000. Now, how do we do this? Let's see. Um, I will open the engines configuration file, which is in the which resides in the etc engines sites enabled. Of course, for the more sophisticated sophisticated scenarios, uh, you can uh, access the sites available and just link the websites if you have multiple websites. However, in that case, we'll keep it very simple. So let's open the Nano, and you can see a lot of uh, stuff here. But we shouldn't care about it. Let's just remove it and create a new file. So again, nano default. And we'll just create our own engine configuration. We'll type server, open the brackets, and let's say you wanna listen on a port of 80, and we want to set the location to be just, to just uh, include all of the movement of the traffic, like this. And we want to do a thing called proxy pass. And basically, proxy pass is a technique called reverse proxy, which basically redirects all of the movement from our port, like in this case, port 80, to the port of 5000. So we'll say we have the app running or the localhost, 5000. All right, so that's the most important thing. However, we also need to um, redirect a few more headers. So we'll just do proxy set header. And here I will just type the names of the uh, headers that are required by the ASP.NET Core framework. So give me a sec. Connection header with the value of upgrade. Um, then is the host header. So again, proxy set header, host, host. And finally, a thing called proxy cache bypass, HTTP upgrade. Now we can close our brackets and uh, finalize our configuration. So let's see if everything is correctly. That's fine, that's fine. All right, so let's save our configuration and let's do service engines restart. And now let's try to open the app here. Refresh the page. You can see page cannot be found. So let's go to the entries. And it works great. We just redirected our public port of 80 using engines to the private port of 5000 where our web application resides, right? So as you can see, it's not accessible. I mean, it is, but you can actually restrict it to be not accessible anymore. And we can do it simply by enabling the UFW, which is a firewall for the Linux servers. So let's say UF will enable and only you have allow port 80 and uh, 22 for the SSH. So let's see if we refresh the page one more time. Our app works here. Okay, so as you can see, it's quite easy to build the Docker image using the ASP.NET Core framework and then publish your or actually pull the image on the Ubuntu server or the Windows server, whatever you use, and run the engines to expose your application to the real world. And I hope that this uh, simple tutorial will be helpful for you, and um, see you next time.